This is a little quick video of my um, compost heated uh, grow house. Um, it's basically a cold frame, but it's built on top of a compost bin. Uh, the compost bin's actively managed, so it's it's quite hot. It's cooled down a lot. It was up to around about 73. Now it's down to about 65 Celsius, but it's 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 pretty much full up. Um, it, it could do with being topped up a little bit with some more um, brewer's waste and some wood chip. But uh, the greenhouse or the cloche on top is um, kind of work in progress, so it's a sort of development. And what I've got here, I'll just uh, go a little bit closer so you can see. I've got these little hooks here, little clips, and this is um, six millimeter uh, acrylic from a, a laser cutter. So it's from their scrap bin, so it's, it's kind of reclaimed material. I've got a little PVC angle on here just to close up the gap on top. And these are the two Wests and Elliot cloche clips. So basically the, the top section here is, is just a little cloche and you can use it on the ground just to give um, produce and, and plants a little bit of protection from late frosts as well. It helps to warm the soil up as well. But what I've done here, I've extended that with this sec second sort of section, which is made from a, a very broken down um, cold frame. And the cold frame just had um, PVC, uh, sort of uh, twin wall, very thin PVC sheeting, which was all broken away, it was all missing. Uh, the ends of the the, the angle, um, aluminium angle, were quite badly corroded and it being blown around in the wind, so it's all bent and, and damaged. So the, it was around about a, a metre by maybe 800, 900. But what I've done is um, I've cut off the damaged sections drilled new holes and then just made it into this uh, it's about 450 by by a meter and then I'm just using this as a, as a, a large sort of outdoor heated propagator for starting off seedlings what is quite nice about this as well I don't know what the actual construction thing was but that was on top and it, it had some sort of thin sheet that slid in there for access but the gaps themselves are about six millimeters so I've got five mil acrylic for the for the, on this channel and it, it fits in nicely there's a little sliding door the little door handle is uh, off an old school desk so that's all reclaimed as well and then these are reclaimed aluminium these are the cross braces from the actual um, cold frame they're quite nice they're about three mil th three by 18 millimeters and then i, I radius the poles on there i cut the ends off the, the holes were quite large i think there was a quite a large tolerance when they went in there and I've got the uh, the vent on the end. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another vent down here as well. I'm thinking of putting an 18mm sort of exhaust fan on top as well. But um, it's worked out really well. Um, so I made templates. So I, I pattern routed these, these pieces out. Uh, and it's got these little clips here. So that originally the, the top section was sitting down on, on here like the one behind it. And then I've, I've made this uh, as a sort of extension, but it is very, very good. It's, um, it's it's about 18 degrees Celsius at night, and then I've got some squash and some melon plants and some patty pans and things in there. They're looking quite nice. I mean, these ones are already. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see. You see a little white root just pop in through there, and then that's growing on a capillary tray, which is a reclaimed. Um, plastic uh just a reclaimed plastic tray from from the school where i work they're redeveloping their science department and, and chuck those out so I've, I've put these um cross braces on here just to give it a bit more rigidity and what i thought is um in the summer when it's too hot to actually have a, a, a small greenhouse like this um the plastic panel at the back i've just fixed in with four screws so i might take those screws out and then take the panel out and then just have it as a sort of alpine house so it's got loads of ventilation but just a little bit of protection from the rain as well uh, another little development what i'm going to do here is um this was just temporary because um i've got plants in here so i needed to protect those from the cold at night and um i was going to get a well i've got it on order it's a, a 30 millimeter by 15 millimeter aluminium channel and i was just going to use um foam double half sided adhesive tape fix that on to that to the um, to the sides so it's just about 20 mil overlap overhang each end 
and so that's a little channel and then I was going to fix a bit of greenhouse scattering down here and then run small downpipe down here and then tee off for an overflow pipe so it tops up the capillary trays so it's a little bit of uh, rain water catchment as well but what I thought would be quite nice as well when the condensation runs down the insides it will actually run into that gutter so then as, as that builds up then it will overflow hopefully into the little channel down the down there as well um, I have got it's funny um, I cut one of the panels out I, I repurposed all this plastic but then I realized I only had six mil left and I'd used up all the five millimeters so I'm short of a door at the moment I'm going to pick one of those up later so this was just a, a side piece I, I cut out I'm not actually going to use that but um yeah that's six millimeters and it does fit in but it won't slide nicely so I'll just get these out of the way I've got some of these computer case fans here these are 80 millimeter fans and this just adds a little bit of um, air movement in here and it keeps the plant sort of a little bit of, uh, of movement around there I've got some tomato plants in there you can see in the sun it will got up to 30 and then the, the lowest it got at night was 16.9 and it's 19.6 there. So it's nice and warm in here. And there's my little seeds looking happy. Got basil, tomatoes, peppers. Some are coming up, some are a bit slower. And then these are the little melons and the cucumbers, squash, patty pans. Yeah, so it's it's really successful. Um, and obviously this is kind of work in progress. I'm, I'll develop this and then post back a little bit more as it uh, progresses so these are little vents in the sun you just want to keep it open just a little bit of ventilation in there and the second one here is more of a hotbed I've got that going just to start seeds off so I've got some seed trays in there so really with these things um, it's, it's fairly small but uh, the idea is once the plants are a little bit bigger you, you move those out into cold frames tend to um, acclimatize them a little bit to being outdoors and then you can kind of plant them out so it, it gives you a little bit of a head start I, I made this quite late in the year I was quite intent on, on getting a hotbed started uh, this compost bin yeah it's only six just under 60 and this is just slightly higher than 60 so normally I'd start a hotbed like this off in maybe December and keep it going through right through the, into the spring. But it, it's quite it's quite nice though, because the weather in this country is so changeable. You might have a really a warm spell and then there'll be a cold spell and then you've got to protect from frost. So it, it's nice to have some flexibility. And by having the, the smaller uh, cold frames, um, it gives you that more of a sort of um, zoning in terms of how much moisture, how much humidity, how much ventilation you've got as well. So I've, I've got some more of this 1.5 millimeter angle. I think it's 25 millimeters by 1.5 equal angle. I'm going to make another one of these just because it was so sort of successful. And I'm really, really pleased with this. What I'll do is, well, I'll, I'll make drawings of this. So um, I'm trying to set this up in a school as well. I think if school children have got access to something like this it's 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 quite fascinating in terms of having that heat and just be able to put your hand in there when it's a cold windy wet day it's 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 literally like another world in there so hopefully that will inspire them and just give them a bit more awareness of some of the processes that are going on in in terms of composting and soil life and microbes and co2 in the carbon cycle an extension of this, what I'm planning to do is um, this compost bin is subdivided into two separate areas. So there's a hot area at the front, and it's almost like having uh, different sort of um, burners on a on a hob on a stove. And the back section there is um, subdivided up with 25 litre containers. So ideally, as the compost is starts to, to mature, then I'll I'll circulate that through those containers, and then the compost at the back will be ready to use. But what I'm thinking of doing is, because these are more of a kind of wormery at the back, underneath that insulated, uh, you can see there's some green roof planters on there and there's some insulation and some boards. And I'm quite tempted to have almost like a soil feeding station on there 
combined with rain, rainwater harvesting so it, it keeps that those conditions nice and damp and I'm also thinking of having the, the runoff from the, the roof into a capillary tray that, that wicks back into the compost so it helps to keep the compost maintained with the, the correct sort of moisture and what I thought by doing that by combining these things as well then you've got this, the soil life from from the actual worms which will circulate um, nutrients back into the soil so into the sort of growing beds so with these capillary trays you can't see underneath but what I've got I've got some blocks of wood and I'm not sure you just just might be able to see yeah you can see there's a little gray PVC pipe there that's my little filler so I can check the, the water level and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill one at each end so one can be a filler and then the other one's going to have a little cork floating in it and a, a, maybe a bit of doweling with a, a maximum and a minimum so I can see how much moisture is in there but then underneath here there's wooden blocks and there's also biochar so when you water the water runs through and um, you always get nitrates washing out from soil and, and some of that particulate will go into that uh, charcoal and then that will help to, to activate that charcoal but what I'm going to do with these 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 lids is um, drill holes in there or, or laser cut some, some of these out so they're 450 millimeters long by 300 and then uh, I want to have some of these actually in contact with the, with the soil so then there can be sort of passage from worms from outside via the compost via the soil feeding stations into that biochar and then up into the plants themselves as well so you'll find that the moisture level in there and the humidity is really favorable for, for worms so I want to combine that as well so what I've noticed when I've had these um, or planters actually growing on top of worm bins or Dalek compost bins when they're full up to the top when they've got that access the plants really thrive when they're actually growing in isolation they they kind of almost stagnate after a time and then the soil doesn't seem to have any life left in it and they just the plants almost look fairly inert so I think that's going to be quite successful but that's that's one of these things I'm looking to sort of develop in this and then I'll I'll, I'll post updates as they that progresses so that's that's pretty much all for now I'm um, this capillary tray as you can just see it's the empty tray I've got to put some moisture mat in there and then the um, perforated polythene over the top as well that just uh, helps prevent a little bit of um, moisture loss so you can just see it's a little bit damp underneath where the pot's in contact with that yeah, but it, it's, it's, it's very good, and what is excellent about this is that the, the materials themselves were reclaimed, so it's uh, very little cost.